guys. So a bit of a surprise today, I'm going on a whim to one of my favorite plant nurseries. Very spontaneous, I've just decided to go shopping. I saw this beautiful wishlist plant of mine on one of the social medias this morning and I really, really want it. I'm dying to get a new plant. I haven't gone plant shopping in ages. So I'm gonna hop in the car and go straight there. I'll take you with me and let's have a look at this beautiful wonderland. I'll show you around and hopefully I'm on a mission to get this one plant. Let's see how we go. So come with me and let's dive into this amazing, beautiful nursery together. enjoyed that walk around wasn't it beautiful with all the water everywhere I just absolutely loved it now I've got my five plants down here yeah, ready to go I'm gonna try and go through them one by one the first one we're gonna start with or first two we're gonna start with uh, are both caladiums and I actually saw this one first how cute is that look at the bright red colors it's absolutely beautiful now I purchased one with the leaf at the back a little bit gone already, that's fine. But the reason why I did that when I was searching around, it actually has two plant stems. So that kind of gives me two plants. So I was a little bit sneaky with that, but I just absolutely love the red, gorgeous leaves. Now this is a Caladium Blazing Sun, it says, for around $20. Caladiums love bright light because as you can see, there's not a lot of green at all in the leaves. So to get energy, they need to photosynthesize. That's what we learned in school, hopefully, in biology. What I'm going to do is keep it, like all of my other caladiums, in a very bright area in my house. I'm actually going to put it into the brightest room up near a window where it actually gets direct morning sun. They do like a lot of water. They're a tropical plant. Uh, they like a humid environment. And I must admit, I like to keep my caladiums damp with the soil. Make sure the soil is very drainy, has high drainage, but caladiums love a lot of water and I do seem to water them quite often. In winter, uh, if there's not enough light or not high enough temperatures, it gets a bit cold. Old. They can go dormant. They have the tubers down below, but because I keep them in such a bright room, they actually keep leaves for me all year. So yeah, bright, beautiful plant. So I saw this one, but then I saw another caladium, which was actually the picture that I originally saw in the advertising this morning. Uh, and it wasn't my wish list plant, but it was a pink version, <laughs> an absolutely beautiful pink version of this plant. So it's called a caladium scarlet girl. 
How cool is that name? I absolutely love it. Only one plant in the pot this time, that's fine. I'm going to keep it in a very bright spot again because it doesn't have a lot of green in the leaves. Look at those colours and patterns though. Oh, just absolutely beautiful. So now you can see why I had to get both because they're beautiful, stunning, gorgeous plants, amazing colour, something a little bit different. So that's my two caladiums. So exciting. Oh my gosh. So the next one I'm going to show you is something that I have seen a few times and I've um denied. And I saw the price of this one and I thought, why not? Because I'm in a buying mode. And it is this variegated Monstera laniata. So you just treat this guy like any other Monstera. If you've got the green Monstera, just treat it like the same. They love a good chunky soil where the water can go all the way through and drain all the way through. They don't like sitting in water. Try and water the plant when the chunky mix gets at least two thirds dry. Um, I usually use my water meter with all my Monsteras, but when you do give them a drink, give them a really good soaking, right? So big soaking, wait until it dries out at least halfway, two thirds of the way, and then soak again. They are a tropical plant. They love humid environment. I don't spray the leaves because I don't want water sitting on the leaves, but I do like to keep them in a high humid environment. So put a whole lot of other plants around them or maybe some pebble trays underneath uh, with a bit of water in them and that can keep them humid as well. Of course, a humidifier, which is what I have about five of them around this house. Uh, my electricity bill is a little high, that's fine. And of course, because he's a Monstera, I'm going to pop him on a pole. And again, the reason why I got this guy, as you can actually see from the pattern, in the leaves one of the plants that is in the base here has a very like uh, blocky kind of white and green and then this one has more of a what do you call it staccato green so there's actually a couple of stems coming out here I'm going to check the roots in a couple of weeks time I don't repot them straight away but beautiful variegation absolutely love it can't wait to see this one grow big leaves Right, that's three. The next one I'm going to show you, I have seen around, they just grow beautiful big leaves. And that is this one. Look at those leaves. Look at the variegation. And this is the newest one, which will come out in green and I can already see the variegation coming through. Absolutely beautiful. And again, I was a bit cheeky, but the reason why I got this is because I have two plants in one. I do like to look for that when I'm in a plant shop. Now, this guy loves water. Uh, it's an alocasia, I'm going to butcher the name, I'm so sorry. It's an alocasia gaganum, ga ga gaganum, ga ga I'm just going to, I'm just going it, to, it'll script somewhere, I'm just going to put it there. But alocasias uh, love good water, they love human environments, it's another tropical plant. The stems are very thick or can get very thick and that's where they hold a lot of the water. The leaves are huge, but with alocasias or elephant ears, the, the roots are quite thin compared to the plant. So when you're getting the mix, you want something to hold and keep the potting mix damp, but uh, it will drain very, very easily and it's a very light airy mix. You'll find that a lot of people like myself actually like putting alocasias into lecker because you can see a lot of the gaps and the plant will find its way and it helps itself to the water system. So I find that alocasias do love it uh, in lecker, me personally. The other thing about alocasias, and if you've got some, you may already know this. When it comes to pests, they are a spider mite heaven. Spider mites absolutely love them. And spider mites are, well actually mealy bugs are the bane of my existence, but spider mites are the other bane of my existence. The two of them are probably the pests I have the most, which I hate. So just keep an eye on the leaves, make sure you wipe them over with neem oil or a spray because yeah, spider mites come through and spider mites can be very hard to see, especially on beautiful variegated leaves. Excited about this one, see what he can do. My final one is not a wishlist plant, but very similar to a wishlist plant that I wanted and it's on my list and it still is, but I found one that is actually very similar. Check this one out. You are gonna love this if you like variegation. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, can you get a nicer variegation colour? I mean, seriously, it's a little bit less variegation, I think, in that one. So this is a Homolamina stardust. And there's only one plant in the pot. Uh, I wasn't lucky enough to find two, but I did see a beautiful new leaf coming out. And that leaf also seems to be already very, very, very variegated. Very variegated. So I'm really looking forward to this one. So Homolaminas are tropical plants. They like a good humid environment. They don't like direct suns. So medium to bright uh, area in your house. You can put it near a window, just don't put it in the direct sunlight of that window. And again, homolaminas I find are another one of those plants that you need to just make sure you get the soil right. Likes a damp soil, but not a soggy soil. So you've got to get that balance between a good draining soil that keeps it a little bit damp, but not too damp and not too wet because then it'll just get soggy. It'll get a soggy bottom is what I think they're called. Okay, so that's all of my plants. 
Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited. I haven't actually bought plants for ages. Thank you for joining me. If you liked this video, please do leave some comments in the lower section. If you've got any questions on how to look after these guys, let me know. I'll try and answer all of them. Please do subscribe if you like this. Have a great week and I am off to try and hide these plants around from my partner so he doesn't see them. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.